Okay, so you can see again, you're looking down the, uh, the ridge line. We're going to kind of hop, skip, and jump down to, towards uh, Red, Red Mountain. Now, we're, as we go east from De Bruyne, uh, we'll notice that the, the valley kind of uh, flattens out a little bit. You can see it's a little flatter down here. And we're, we're, as we go here, we're at Boucher. Uh, Dick Boucher is one of our top growers in the state. Uh, he grows here in Grandview in the middle of the Yakima Valley, then to um, Red Mountain. And we can see uh, the hill on Red Mountain is just an extension of the Rattlesnake Ridge. And now we're down, uh, there are almost all vineyards on Red Mountain. Uh, this is Heart of the Hill, which is uh, Kiona, uh, the family, the Williams family. And right to, uh, above where it says Heart of the Hill, you can see Cole Solari, which is the, uh, the St. Michelle Antonori project on Red Mountain. And Red Mountain is a very important component of a lot of wines all over the state as well, because and has been historically because they have excellent structure, excellent tannins, great color, and so it's a, a little bit of Red Mountain fruit will do can do a lot to elevate a blend, especially if you're looking for a very big muscular kind of style. Whereas in uh, our vineyard is very elegant and aromatic, and so it depends on what it depends on what you're trying to do. And um, but there's a lot of a lot of Red Mountain fruit goes in a lot of uh, bottlings all over the state of Washington as well. And one thing you'll notice, and as you drive by, you'll notice the it's a very uniform southwest facing slope. So this the road the roads go north south, so you can tell that's a, that's northeast. To, to, uh, I'm sorry, northwest to southeast sloping, and as you drive by, you'll really see it on the interstate. It's just a big, broad, southwest-facing hill. It's the warmest grape-growing region in the state every year. Well, it, some years there it ties for the warmest region, but typically it is the warmest growing region in the state, and uh, as such, uh, it's never a problem to get the Cabernet, the late ripening Cabernet, uh, totally right. Um, the, the wines tend to be big and muscular, and so it's a, it's a very, it's, what's, what's unique is along the slope, uh, we go from moderate heat, you'll see at Elephant Mountain, a little higher elevation, uh, to moderate heat at De Bruyne, uh, certainly on the steeper slopes of De Bruyne, which is steeper than most of Red Mountain, we see that we ripen the Cabernet in a very timely fashion too. So, uh, whereas you might not see say much Riesling or Chardonnay planted up on Red Mountain just because those are, uh, they tend to like a little more moderate climate mm -hmm. and uh, there's just nowhere to hide on Red Mountain. So in terms of the heat, it's, it's really, it's it's, uh, it's big calling card. Yeah, and the wind because as, um, <coughs> with the hills and the diurnal temperature shift, you always have breezes, you always have wind, you always have air movement. And especially on Red Mountain where they have a lot of that, uh, you get, you, that also helps develop tannins and structure. That's a great point. It, our prevailing winds are from the southwest, so this get, bears the brunt of a lot of the prevailing winds. And whether it's on Red Mountain or Horse Heaven Hills, which are also very windy, the uh, the wind actually affects the vine and the size of the leaves and the canopy, and it adds a level of stress to the vine, which causes the, the grapes to fight back by making more color and tannins and things like that. So you'll see some some really muscular wines out of Red Mountain as well as the Horse Seven Hills. Yeah, and we all know that stress is good for grapes, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, just like people, when they don't have to work at anything, they don't have any good stories to tell. Mm -hmm. So we don't want their lives to be too comfortable because then they'd be boring. And where's the fun in that? And I think that's what someone will see. And when we go up to Elephant Mountain today, we'll see some really cool stuff because they have taken, figuring out how to make the grapes not too happy and not too unhappy. That's the thing. You, if you're too stressed, you can't get anything done. If you're not stressed, uh, uh, if you're not stressed, you know you hang around, and eat bonbons all the time. That's not good either. So you want to be somewhere in, in between. So that's kind of the overview. Anything else to add? I don't know. We I don't know if Barb's going to let me say we have time for questions or not. Just a couple questions, and then we'll hop down and head to the Has climate change affected the well, the interesting thing about the climate change models, and actually my intern did his grad work on climate change, um, all the climate change models show the Yakima Valley and Washington State as being protected because of the way the hillsides are. 
Um, a lot of the real extreme variations that you see are not going to, they're, they're moderated here. So we're in a little bit of a buffer zone of a lot of the extreme climate changes that are, are, that are predicted. Um, we do, we are doing a lot of things with uh, water management, which will help us conserve water more effectively going forward. So we have better viticulture now and we're using our resources more conservatively for the future. But we are seeing a lot of investment and interest from uh, other parts of the world. There's been a lot of investment from California especially as uh, some conditions get more challenging there. Um, there's Washington's becoming more and more attractive. Yeah, another good point. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, so the Cascades are here and the Blue Mountains are here. And so if you look at major weather patterns, that's why if you're in the Midwest, it's hot in the morning and it's, and it's humid and then all of a sudden the next day you're freezing and it's really cold because the Gulf Stream just goes up and down over the whole country and there's nothing to buffer it and block it. But here in our protected little, very predictable, boring weather, which is amazing, um, all the water comes off of, all the weather, including water, comes off of the Pacific, off of the Pacific Ocean hits the Cascades, which is why it rains all the time in Seattle. So by the time the clouds and the weather come up and get to us from the west, it's their white puffy clouds and sunshine. I mean, the sunny side, we get 300 days of sunshine a year. And then uh, any weather coming from the north, you've got the Blue Mountains and the Rockies that kind of protect us from, from the north. And so all that weather coming from this way is pushed off more towards the more towards Montana and the Plains, and it can't really get to us because there's a there's a mountain range in the middle. You said blue mountains. The blue, the blues, which are a part of the Rockies. You'll see the blues today in Walla Walla. Those are the, yeah. the hill. As you go into Walla Walla, you'll see them rising up. Mm -hmm. And so we get we get eight and a half to eleven inches of rain. A year of precipitation every year here, so we don't have to worry about things like rain during harvest. I mean, it might rain on Friday, but we'll just wait a day or over the weekend to be able to pick again. Um, so things like that don't impact us. Um, so it's really, it's really a very stable region, which is going to be great for us going forward.